Well, hey guys, welcome back. Today we're taking a look at something really cool. It's from across the pond. It's a Roco snowplow in HO scale. Now this snowplow does some really cool things with DCC commands, such as it'll turn itself around 180 degrees so you don't have to use a turntable or pick it up and turn it around. And it actually turns on the fans so you can, or the blades, so you can see the blades working. A really innovative and really interactive snowplow here at HO scale, so let's take a look at what you get starting now. Start by unboxing this, which I do on pretty much every review. Got a little sleeve here, and it's got the BNSF snowplow sketch on the side. That is about it for the sleeve other than the made in EU barcode back here. In the box, slides off like this, <clears throat> just like with all my reviews. This is the first time opening it. And this had a long journey all the way from a far away area. So, see how everything ends up, but uh, got some little plastic components in here. and a manual looks like it comes in its own display box which is very unique and different from what we see and looks like a turn to turn the screw to loosen up the connection but before do I do that I want to let it out of the box which looks like it's done with some pushes of these little tabs on the bottom this little plastic brace that made its way loose and I'm turning this normally I wouldn't spend so much time on unboxing but we've never done a Roco product and that is the brace that it's in and the little display which actually has some track ties and rail molded in to this road bed on the display so you could easily put that on a mantle or something. Alright from this angle we can take a look at some of the detail but before we do that I did plug in the road number or the cab number into Google and it brought up a different snowplow that's because the CSX version of these snowplows is pretty close to correct this version is just a scheme, a BNSF scheme put on that type of snowplow. The real BNSF with this road number has a different snowplow configuration altogether. So just wanted to make that programming note for you purists out there. Now on the front, you can see that there are these blades that will turn and move the snow out of the way. There's also these little areas over here that are fixed that kind of catch the snow to put it out at a certain angle and keep it from going up here into the blowout area or <clears throat> where the snow is pushed out. So obviously we're not going to use model snow or anything. It doesn't function like that all the way through. This is just a representation. Now <clears throat> there are windshield wipers that look finely detailed like etched metal and cab figures installed. I'll show you that a little closer if I can with some cab detail and dial detail as well. But this is kind of the nose of the locomotive. Now what I meant by 180 degrees is, see it's facing this way, once we have it powered up this will turn around and go the other way without actually having to pick up the snow plow or having to turn it around on a turntable or something like that. So let's take a little closer look don't have my little turntable to turn this thing around and show you all the features but you can see right there on the windshield area there's some areas that are circled out I believe that's like a heater element to keep the windshield clear not a hundred percent I've not done my research on the real thing here it's also a little beacon represented up top and there are lights located here I believe we'll see which all lights function, but these represent lights as well right there at the tip of my pointer. Grab irons down here along the side. This should provide you a pretty good look at the cab interior. 
with the crew figures. There are two crew figures installed and then you can see on the panel right about here all of these dials that are hand painted or painted as well. I'm guessing hand painted because that's extremely fine detail. Windshield wiper here on the side, crew access ladder, the door down here and some plumbing running up here as well. As you go down there's all the truck detail and the side of the snow plow blade area there. These little guys right here will actually help you or help the snow plow to carve a path that ensures clearance for all of the traffic because you can't just have clearance of the rails you have to have it past the rails enough and that seems accurately modeled because when you're straight on with the snow plow it's actually extending out past the ties somewhat make sure that that traffic that you're clearing all the snow for has the path to get through without getting wedged or stopped there's antenna detail there and then here is where the engine compartment of the snow plow would be you can see all these compartment doors and the different exhaust stacks I believe one of those might be an air intake stack as well and then more truck detail on the rear end and it appears to be KD metal couplers installed on the rear bottom of this snowplow, you do see another snowplow, the fixed snowplow that actually finishes the job that the front blade started, kind of finishes off any surface areas. There is enough clearance there that, that should not get caught on any of your grade crossings or switches. Um, I'm sure in the real world it may be a little lower to kind of finish off the job of the front. There's another view of the cab on the other side. Very similar detail and another crew figure there and a brake wheel here. And then the rest of the housing of the snowplow is on this side. I wanted to show you a couple more angles before we get into detail. The front, there's the blades. You can see the details there. And then these fixed areas turn with the blades while these up top stay fixed to the frame of the snowplow. Then you've really got dual blower areas here, so one for each side, and those would typically blow the snow out of the way of the track. Okay, for those wondering about the manual, there are English functions listed in the manual, so you don't have to do any conversion to another language. We're going to go through the functions listed in the manual and just kind of see what happens here. Do you have headlights on? I'm going to kill some lights so you can see All right, this. 16 functions listed in the manual. We're going to see what happens. F0 is lights on and off, and you can see those are the lights that we kind of pointed to earlier that worked. One is sound on and off. That's F1. F2 is mill. So that starts the blades spinning. You can see that there. So I just turned those on and off a couple of times. We won't leave those running because I know this camera is sensitive and picks up a lot of sound sometimes. F3 is raise mill. So you've got angles that way for it. Then you hit it again and it stops wherever you want it to. So we'll bring it back down and hit F3 again to stop it. F4, rotate body. Here's the fun part. I'm going to zoom out for this a little bit. So cool. Very unique. So we just rotated the body around. 
So now it can change directions, go about its business. And F5 is horn. So each press of F5 does that horn sequence. I wasn't hitting F5 really quick or anything. Where you see the little light under the door? That is the step lighting. I'm blinking it a few times for you to see with the press of F7. We have F8, which is the warning signal lamp in this manual here. North Americans usually call that the beacon light. And that flashes as well, again with the function F8. F10 is the horn. F11 sanding. Well, I had that going already. F12 is rear lights. You can see those. I will cut lights out again. Like your rear marker lights. F13 is curve squeaking only with F1 and while driving. There, so you heard that and I just turned it off. F14 is mute, F15 is volume up or down. Just wanted to test most of the functions. I know you guys usually see me do an abbreviated function test, but with this, we've never reviewed a Roco product before, so why not have the full experience on this snowplow? This snowplow can get moving too, like this is 46 speed steps, so you got just a third of the speed step table and it's moving pretty good. And you get brake squeal just like that. And we're going to go through slow speed steps. Now it appears when you turn the snowplow around, the direction will turn with it so you don't have to do forward or reverse. I'll double check that one more time before we end this review. But look at this slow speed control, just absolutely crawling along, not jerking at all. Very smooth. So just so you know, right now we're at one speed step. And it's just barely moving. I mean, I almost have to zoom in for you to see it. I jump to two here if I can stabilize my DCC controller. Three, four, and five. So all the low speed step settings were just a crawl and just very precise, probably the most precise drive I've seen in an HO scale item. I'm going to go in reverse here. One. Let me see if it turns while you're moving. I believe you have to be stopped. I know you guys may have some questions about the coupler due to the fact that. There are you know, quite a bit of clearance there. So I'm going to take a piece of rolling stock we have sitting here. See how it lines up. Since we don't have our KD coupler height gauge, it got pushed in the move a little bit. So that actually looks kind of low. So you may have to do some coupler tightening. But I don't know if this is 100% correct. So let's go look at just a couple pieces of rolling stock here. Yeah, it looks like uh, that coupler is sitting a little low. Maybe it was a little low on the gauge. I thought it was, but I never used that gauge to test. So there's a coupler height for those who use this for your coupler height. I guess if you are looking at that circle, it might be sitting low. 
Now I mentioned earlier there's one other view I wanted to show you and didn't get a chance to, we kind of got ahead of ourselves. But one thing I do want to mention out of an abundance of caution, that is do not free roll this thing. With your regular pieces of rolling stock and locomotives, kind of push them along. This seems very geared, like it's something's dragging, whether that's traction or whatever. It's definitely something that looks like you shouldn't be free rolling, so I wouldn't. So the other angle I wanted to show you was just the bottom angle here. You can see the bottom of the snowplow housing area. You can also see a little brace right there. It's sitting in between the two areas. I think it just breaks up snow accumulation. And you can see up towards the front, by my finger, see a little stepladder area and separately applied grabs there as well. And there's that view of that snow plow on the back that just picks up the rest of the snow and smooths out whatever this snow plow did not clear. So I wouldn't recommend actually using this on model snow. You'll get get the mechanism gunked up. This is simply for fun, a little bit of imagination and use without any sort of actual snow. Since we can, I'm going to go ahead and pull test this locomotive. So we will actually see what kind of test it has. And it also gives us a chance just to make sure it could pull some actual cars. You know, I don't want you guys to wonder if it's able to pull it all. So I'm going to fix this in place and let her rip. And you probably can't see it too well from this angle, but it just surpassed three ounces, which is approximately 40 to 45 pieces of rolling stock. So you should be able to pull anything that's prototypically correct for a snowplow contest, which are very short. Well, now it's time for my final thoughts on this snowplow from Roco. It's very well executed, well done. The thing is I can't stop from hitting F4. I just keep doing it and doing it because there's nothing this innovative that I've seen in the model railroad industry. And I've seen some really cool innovations over the last 10 years. But just hitting F4 every time it's stopped and turning it around is so much fun. And it's just a really neat interactive product, something that could help bring kids to the hobby, something to show people who are kind of bored with model railroading that aren't in model railroading, like your neighbors come over or whatever. But it's just a really neat tool. And the sound is pretty good too. It's not too high, it's not too low out of the box. You can adjust it with some functions, which makes it nice. You don't have to go in there and adjust it with any CV settings or anything. You can, they do have a list of CV settings you can adjust, but it simply functions adjust the sound. So it's a nice feature on the higher end of the functions which again, I said, there are a total of 16 functions listed, so a nearly packed decoder, which is really cool. Smooth drive, great sound, great operation, just a little coupler height adjustment, and you will have a very fine product here in this Roco snowplow. With that said, I'm gonna leave you with a run by of this snowplow by itself, and we'll see you next time right here on my channel. Take care.